Awesome. So, tell me a little bit about Workbench. What is Workbench? Which I, I, I love the name, by the way, but what is it? Uh, we are a, an all-in-one construction, design, and development company. Okay. Uh, so, a person could come to us with a vision for an ADU, or perhaps they have a large amount of land that has one home on it, and they want to do something with the land, they could come to us and we could go through all the options for them, the price of all the options, we could do all the architecture and design in-house, and then we would also build it. So they have a one-stop shop for all their design and building needs. Isn't that different? I mean, that's not the norm. Is that, I mean, is that the case if I went to another company? There's not that many of you that do that. That's correct, yeah. yeah. We are very few. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, especially in our case where we kind of handle absolutely everything for the client, so there's no no one else they need to even call or talk to. We can do every step, and what that does is it helps them get a product faster and at a cheaper cost overall, and takes out a lot of lag time that they would experience otherwise, where they have to go between different designers and builders and however that um, works out. And probably just less stress. Yeah, a lot less headache less and a lot less stress. You know, like as a you know person that wants to develop a project that's usually not their forte is a product manager and like, okay, I'm gonna get the architect and the builder, everybody, they just come to you and you just do that. Yep. They Absolutely. have a full-time job doing yeah. something else. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. They don't need another one usually. Yeah. That is super cool. So what was like the, the genesis? Why did you, I mean, we'll start off, maybe we'll start off Tim first and then sure. Dr. Mealy, but like, why did you get into the world of building and construction and architect and design? That's a good question. It it's kind of it's a giant puzzle okay. and I really, you know, enjoy the process and the problem solving and really the end product seeing something come from from nothing. Uh, you take an idea and you turn it into a, a building of some sort that people can live in or they can experience in a in a commercial sense. You know, there's there's a lot of reward to that when at the end of the day, people, you walk in and somebody is, there's like, for example, we just opened Far West Fungi yeah. down on Laurel. And when we walked in for the opening and there's 30 people in there at one time and there's people going in and out and the owners are there and their families there and everyone's happy and smiling. Like we help, that's that their vision. Cool. We helped them create it. And then, you know, that, that getting that at the end of the day is really what, drives us to keep doing this is creating the vibrancy in our city and the sustainable economy that that we all want here that is cool i mean that must be amazing just like you're driving around it's like yeah i did that one yeah i did that one yeah and you see somebody living in it um, creating a business or and it's like you know it's like you mentioned it's like it's life changing Absolutely. for people yeah what about you jamili why what was the reason that you got into this world so at the you know, ripe young age of 16, when you're talking to your guidance counselor in high school about yeah. what you should do with the rest of your life, um, I really liked art and I really liked math, but I didn't really feel like I loved either one of them or that's was fine. talented that, That's not enough. usually a, like a thing that people like, those <laughs> right. two. You Architects one or the other. end up as yeah. <laughs> people who like art and math. Yeah. Uh, so I went to Cal Poly and it turns out it's just an amazing education, both in design and also just yeah. in people and in kind of how how um, impactful a space can be to your mm -hmm. emotional and mental well-being. And so that's to me what, like kind of at the core of why I love doing this is I know how much of a positive impact a beautiful or thoughtful space can have on an individual's day. Yeah. And whether that's like the fabric of the whole city, like as you walk down a street in urban design or you know, sitting on your back porch, on your rocking chair, and like drinking your coffee in the morning. Yeah. So it's such an impactful and often overlooked thing in our life. So that's kind of at the core what motivated me and what I learned to really love about it. Yeah. So what what are some of the, the, the focuses that you have? Is there certain kind of developments or certain kind of projects that you really enjoy to work on? Absolutely. So we do as I think most people know who know about Workbench probably know that we do a, a lot of stuff on ADUs, mm -hmm. a lot of work with the city in the past and the county kind of looking at their codes and things like that. Um, and we have a, a just a lot of ADUs right now, which is great. Yeah. And they're super good infill. 
there are ways that people can create housing for their family members especially so an older relative or young kids that want to move back to Santa Cruz after school or something along those lines like it creates housing for people that really want to be here um, and kind of keeps families connected in a way that are are we're not used to living like that right now mm -hmm. so and I think as the cost of living gets higher yeah. Um, we're going to start to see more of these multi-generational living situations and ADUs are a wonderful way mm -hmm. to create that. Yeah. I'm always thinking about that. Like, okay, I have a 16 year old. Is he going to stay here in mm -hmm. Santa yeah. Cruz? And, right. a lot, and a lot of people our age, well, you're, you're, you guys are younger than me, but you no, know, but, um, just, you know, we're looking for our children. Are kids going to stay here or they're going to move to Texas right. or right. some other place yeah. that we don't want them to move right. to. So mm -hmm. that's kind of our, you know, we've been doing that for a while. The, the biggest push that we have right now, I would say is towards multifamily. That's our background primarily, yeah. and most of the people in our office background. Um, and really, what that is is between you know four and thirty units ish kind of projects. That's what you see in Santa Cruz more. Um, the ultimate goal of that is we need more housing, right? We need just need yeah. more. So IDUs provide that intermittently. I feel like it's you happening can, though. It is. It is happening. Absolutely. Like, I mean, yeah. and why, I, I know there's some pushback, but overall it seems like there's so many developments that are in the work, uh, the works, um, I mean, even in, not just in the city of Santa Cruz, but in Scotts Valley, there's mm -hmm. like four absolutely. different developments that I mm -hmm. see going down the road. Um, why is that happening now? What do you think? There's some legislative changes that okay. are helping, um, they're essentially mandating that states start to meet, or counties and cities start to meet their arena numbers, which is their re regional housing numbers, okay. and nobody, lots of communities have failed to meet them over the last 10, 15, 20 years. So there's been a, a huge population growth in California statewide, not just in Santa Cruz, statewide, and a complete lack of the construction of housing. So I think there's just enough crunch now, and there's enough momentum, um, and there's, there's enough people like us and other community members showing up at meetings and yeah. saying, yes, we want more housing. We need a place to live. Our kids need a place to live. Our parents need a place to live. Um, so I think there's just more momentum of, around it. I think financially it still doesn't make a lot of sense. It's really hard as a developer to yeah. make a project pencil. So when you can, I mean, you really have to fight for that and get it built. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, I've heard of, you know, just even recent, just because of like the height requirement mm -hmm. was changed, that was able to get the developers to be able to do some more projects right. than they could do before. Yeah. Yeah. The state density bonus and then the county passed an enhanced mm -hmm. density bonus. So you, if you offer more affordable units, you can build more densely on a site. And that, okay. that one piece of law alone makes it is a huge impact on the creation mm -hmm. of housing. So you mentioned that, you know, you're going to city council meetings, people like you, they're going to it. Is, do you feel like there needs to be more support in that that realm? And how could people help support that? So, um, yes, definitely there needs to be more support. There's lots of organizations out there doing um, letter writing campaigns, showing up at meetings. Um, I'm a board member of the local YIMBY chapter. Okay. Um, so you can check us out at, I, this. I may have this wrong. I think it's SantaCruzYMB.org. <laughs> I apologize if that's wrong. But are they going to just like look up y YMB Santa Cruz? Yeah. 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 Um, so we do, you know, sign our petition or just add your name to our list that says we support this. We show up at meetings to support this. Mm -hmm. um, the Business Council, MBEP, there's a, a COPA, there's all kinds of regional housing organizations that also have like a call to actions. Okay. So you can just click on the button. It'll open an email to you in your email automatically to send an email to the city council or the planning commission or the board of supervisors and it can be a you know one minute email you know dear board i support I mean, this project please provide email. housing for yeah. us yeah um so there's all kinds of ways like that to get involved um, cool so we should all do that so yes. <laughs> very so, important so what's the like because uh, i i know you too and i know some of the projects you work on but just for the um sake of our listeners, you have some really cool projects that you've done. Like, can we talk about a couple of the actual, like, the real, sure. no, yeah, like, yeah, what are some of the cool projects you've worked on recently? Uh, we finished the Jack O'Neill Lounge recently, which it's is beautiful. an awesome build out, yeah, in the Dream Inn. That restaurant turned out really cool. We're excited about that one. And the Dream Inn is overly ecstatic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there. Every time I see them, yeah. they're like, we are so happy that we you know we met Workbench because oh, they true. just love that you know and it just has such a cool feel inside yeah, there. That yeah, that one turned out really good. Yeah. We're excited about that. We did. Um, there's a mushroom shop which I briefly mentioned, Far West Fungi. They 
are on Laurel, and everyone should go check them out. They're amazing. They have um, the most beautiful yeah. boxes of mushrooms yeah. and all kinds of mushrooms. Yeah, I mean, so you're just buying mushrooms. Yeah, so, you, so it's essentially like a European deli, but instead okay. of having like a meat case, okay. they have a, case, a mushroom case. So it's just beautiful displays of mushrooms. They have growing kits, and then they also have kombucha and grab and go, like soups and sandwiches, yeah. and everything is just so delicious. Mm -hmm. So that, that one's really great. Everyone should go check it out. There's the one we just started that we're super excited about is a 10 unit um, subdivision for Coastal Haven families. This one is the project that, well, maybe Jamila, you can explain it. Sure, so it's, it's a group of families who all have developmentally disabled children or young adults. Yeah. And um, it's a private organization, but they have really come together just as a group of hardworking parents and made this happen. So there's a subdivision with 10 homes on it. Okay. Uh, or there's three parcels. One has 10 homes on it, and it's kind of like a co-housing living situation. So yeah. they'll be, their children as they age can age there. They'll be on-site caretakers if needed. Mm -hmm. So it's each, it's based on individual need. And then the the rest of the bedrooms, they're not going to sell all of the bedrooms. The rest of the bedrooms will be for other low-income um, community members. And then on the parcel directly adjacent, they've also started a nonprofit farm called Common Roots Farm. Yeah. And so the idea is that there can be a lot of cross-pollination and people who are living in the homes can have jobs on the farm. They can be a, an active part of their community. And it's just like they're a wonderful, beautiful group of people, and it's so cool to be a part of that project. And, and again, that's just one of those things you're saying. It's like, you know, look at the impact that you mm -hmm. have, that you're like kind of creating this foundation for these things to thrive. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's yeah. super cool. So, any other projects? Uh, our project, we have a project in SoCal that's a 15 unit townhome project that we're hoping to break ground early next year. Should be in and the planning commission in the next month or two. Twenty percent affordable of the base density, which is something we really wanted to make happen. We didn't have to do that, but we wanted to because we were able. And so, um, it just seems like those kind of things. I mean, just like fifteen doesn't sound like a lot, but it is, and it all adds up. Yeah, it's fifteen absolutely. more homes. Yeah, it's, you know, fifteen teachers who can afford to stay in Santa Cruz. Yeah. It's, um, you know, it's Absolutely. people who can get jobs here instead of being over the hill so that they can hang out with their kids at night yeah. or kids in the morning. And so it's, um, yeah, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's still a drop in the bucket. Yeah, but it's a, it's a big drop. It is a big drop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so if people want to find out more about what you do, they have a project they're working on. Where, what's the best place to find you? Uh, our website, yeah. workbenchbuilt.com. Okay. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook at workbenchbuilt. Okay. Cool. So and yeah, please reach out. Give us a call. Let's you know have a chat, have some coffee. You know, talk about a project, or if you want to hear more about us or other projects, we have plenty more to talk about. And if anyone wants to just come chat for a little bit, let, yeah, give or us a call. They're having a burrito over yeah. at yep. Los Fricos. Yeah, Fricos. Just, just That's turn around the corner. There, there you guys are. Yeah. And, yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much for being on the show. And uh, no, thank you for, for building in our community. Absolutely. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Okay. Well,